My initial inspirations were just a fascination with music in general and a love for the instruments and a real excitement about virtuosity and what great performers can do. And so a lot of my pieces are really more abstract, just about the notes, about the sounds, about the performers playing them. But in a lot of my larger works, I've looked for inspiration outside of music, in particular from the natural world. And most notably, I'm, the first time I did that in a significant way was my piece Burgess Shale, uh, an orchestral work for the Los Angeles Philharmonic, where I drew on research um, that I read about, about the Burgess Shale fossils, which were, the, which were these amazing fossils that revealed previously unknown life forms. And I was very intrigued by those life forms and, and used them for inspiration in the piece. And the piece was a kind of a tone poem that had different sections that referred to these different creatures and the way they might have interacted and so forth. More recently, I've been looking at the natural world from the point of view of a concern for the environment, a concern for global warming, a concern for the changes of the distribution of global ecosystems and what's happening to the warming of the planet and what, how that's affecting uh, um, the, the frozen surfaces of the planet and so forth. And that's just something that, like most of us, I'm just very concerned with and very um, um, sometimes obsessed with and thinking about a lot. And so it was only natural that that would find its way into my music. And so I'm in the middle now of working on a major orchestral work which has different movements that look at the natural world from different perspectives. The first one that I composed that was premiered last year is called Cryosphere, and that's about the world's frozen surfaces and the way that um, icebergs and glaciers are formed and then what happens to them. And the piece is a kind of uh, a reflection on the beauty and wonder of those structures, but also a lament for their loss and their increasingly rapid loss. And I'm actually thinking right now about a piece, um, the working title of which is A Menacing Plume, for obvious reasons. I'm Like so many of us, I've been really concerned about what's happening under the ocean in the Gulf of Mexico and what's likely to occur with all of that oil and all of that benzene that's being pumped into the ocean and what effect it's going to have in the natural life of the ocean. And I don't yet have it worked out how that's going to find its way into the piece, but I'm very obsessed with that, and so it's making this connection with my musical thinking. It's more of a poetic and free associative connection. I'm not trying to directly advocate for some point of view about the environment um, or try to uh, take a kind of a, a musical, political kind of approach to the subject. More generally, I'm just embracing those uh, the images and the concerns that I have, and then free associating with musical thinking and allowing it to affect the music. And then the outcome of that is somewhat unpredictable. But there have been times in some of my pieces where I've drawn on the environment for structural models. And for instance, in my piece Echosphere, which is about to be released on a new CD and DVD, that piece looked at the distribution of global ecosystems at a particular moment in time about 10, 12 years ago, and um, the classification of the different ecosystems and how much of the Earth's surface are covered by each of those ecosystems. And then I composed music um, named for each of those ecosystems, and the proportions of time in the piece follow that same proportion of how much of the Earth's surface the ecosystems um, uh, are covering. And so What's going on there really is it's a kind of a musical expression of those proportions, and it's a way of challenging myself to do things musically that I wouldn't do otherwise and to take my work in a new direction.